Carl and his wife Olivia had dinner. They ate the same dishes. French fries, some fish, and vegetable salad. Half an hour later, Carl felt unwell and called the ambulance. But when specialists arrived, he was already unconscious. The man was immediately taken to a hospital. Luckily, doctors had enough time to save him. When they figured out what was wrong with Carl, everyone was shocked. The man had been poisoned. But how could it happen? He and his wife ate the same dishes, but Olivia was perfectly fine. Even more surprising, the next day, the police arrested the woman for trying to poison her husband. How come? Olivia made all the dishes not salty enough and put poison in the salt shaker. Peter graduated from the police academy and began to work as a trainee detective. One week after the guy started his new job, he already had the first tricky case on his hands. One of his colleagues was investigating a series of crimes connected with smuggling. She was close to solving the case, but several days ago, the woman disappeared. Peter visited the last location where his colleague was spotted and found a note. 710-57735-34-5508-517718. Peter has three suspects. Bill, a manager in an oil company. Todd, a jeweler. And John, a car dealer. Who's the criminal? Peter has managed to prove he deserves his detective badge. The guy turned the message upside down and tried to read it that way. Surprisingly, the letters made rather legible words. Bill is boss. He sells oil. Something went wrong in a super secret laboratory. There was a leak of a newly developed experimental chemical, and it made several plants and animals mutate in the blink of an eye. Scientists ended up locked in one room with the vicious monsters. One of the researchers managed to figure out how they could get out of this dire situation. But the substance they needed was in another part of the laboratory. The scientists could get there through one of three corridors. The first was guarded by fire-breathing crocodiles. Hey, it was an experimental laboratory after all. The second corridor was filled with meat-eating sunflowers with extra sharp teeth. And the third passage was swarming with venomous bees. Which one should the scientists choose? They should opt for the corridor with the sunflowers. Those are plants, and however scary they are, they can't move. Terry and Alice fell in love and started going out. But the woman's best friend, Sarah, was jealous of their relationship. Alice didn't want to lose her friendship and tried to keep the dates with her boyfriend in secret. That's why she left him coded messages with the places where they were going to meet. That day, Terry found a new note. It looked like this. At first, he was puzzled, but soon enough, he realized where he was going to see Alice. Can you figure it out? Alice told Terry to meet her at the street corner. Patrick called the police. The man seemed to be worried sick. My wife Victoria took our dog for a walk in the afternoon. Several hours ago, our pooch returned alone. I don't know where Vicky is. The police questioned the suspects. Mrs. Summers said she'd been watching TV all day long. I was busy delivering the mail, said the postman. I didn't have time to linger in this area, and I didn't see anything. And Mr. Thomas told the police he'd been working in his home office. The detective knew at once one of these people was lying. Who was it? It was the postman. His sleeve is a bit torn, and there's a dog bite on his arm. Plus, some black fur is stuck to his pants. Victoria's dog probably tried to protect the woman. Three expensive watches have been stolen from Mr. Brown's store this year. Uh -oh. The police can't help the poor man. He decides to hire a private detective. 
When Laura arrives, she immediately asks for the CCTV footage from January to December. After watching it, she tells the store owner who the thief is. What has she noticed in the video? The same guy came to the store several times, in April, August, and November. And every time, he has a cast on his arm. But no broken bone would need eight months to heal. Joe had a friend, Randy, who never answered questions directly. Once, Joe sent Randy a message, inviting him to join their common friends in a cafe. Randy's answer was kind of weird. Sorry, no money. Job in job. Luckily, Joe knew his friend well enough to understand what he meant. But can you figure it out? Randy meant he had no money because he was in between jobs. The next time Joe texted Randy was when he needed some advice. Despite all his quirks, his friend was very good at finding solutions to difficult situations. So Joe wrote, My girlfriend took my professional camera without asking permission, and then she accidentally smashed it. What should I do? The answer was bizarre, not that it was unexpected. Give get, give get, give get, give get. At first, Joe didn't think he wanted to follow this advice. But a bit later, he decided it was the best course of action. What was the advice? Forgive and forget. Dylan was an extremely popular guy in his office. Tall, handsome, funny, and friendly. But there was one thing that made certain people dislike him. The man had a new girlfriend every month. That Friday, Dylan came to work happier than he'd ever felt. He finally bought the car of his dreams. At lunchtime, he went to the parking lot to check in on his new toy. Oh no! His car was a mess, scratched and covered in paint. Dylan went pale and called security. He had three suspects, all of them his exes. Andrea said she didn't even know Dylan had got a new car. Catherine answered she'd been preparing a report for their boss and hadn't left her desk. And Mila told the guy she'd forgiven him long ago. Who ruined Dylan's car? It was Catherine. She had some smeared paint on her skirt, and the color is the same as the paint on the man's car. Two maids work in a small hotel in the mountains. One day, the hotel owner finds out one of them regularly steals stuff from guests, but he doesn't know which one it is. Look at these maids cleaning the rooms. Can you help the owner understand who's guilty? The maid on the right hasn't noticed the ring under the sofa. She might not be a great cleaner, but also not a thief. As for the maid on the left, she's spotted the ring and put it in her bucket. It means she's going to take it for herself after she finishes cleaning. She's the one who steals things. One afternoon, all the money was stolen from the register of a small cafe on the beach. The police have five suspects, all of them claim they haven't been to the cafe in the past hour. Look at them closely and try to figure out who's the thief. It's the guy with a cocktail in his hand. He definitely bought it in the cafe. But then, why did he lie about not visiting the place? Police officer Cheryl Adams was visiting her colleagues in another town. She was walking along the river, taking pictures to send to her husband, when a man crashed into her. They both fell to the ground. After helping Cheryl to her feet, the man started to apologize. It turned out someone had stolen his wallet, and he was trying to catch the thief. I was painting my boat, and my wallet was lying next to me. But then I got distracted, just for a moment. But when I turned back, the wallet wasn't there anymore. Cheryl understood the thief couldn't have gone far. She pulled the man to the nearby pier. 
There were four people there. After looking at them closely, the police officer knew who the thief was. Now it's your turn to figure it out. It's the man who's talking on the phone. There's some green paint on his feet. Julia came to have lunch in her favorite restaurant. She occupied a table near the window and put her bag in the seat next to her. Once the woman gave her order to the waiter, she went to the bathroom to wash her hands. But when she returned to the table, her bag was open and her wallet was missing. The waiter told her he had noticed only one man passing by her table. He was short with a tattoo on his neck. He seemed to go out to the terrace. Julia rushed there and saw three people sitting at their tables. She looked at them closely and soon understood who'd taken her wallet. Who was the thief? It's the young woman on the right. You can see a wig and some men's clothing in her bag. Plus, she's wearing a turtleneck to cover her tattoo. You open your eyes and find yourself handcuffed in a small, dark room. Your sister is not with you, although you clearly remember walking outside together in the rain. Well, it seems you were kidnapped and now have to get out. You have to solve some riddles to escape, and each time you'll have 10 seconds to think. Are you ready? First, how about getting rid of these handcuffs? You turn around and see three buttons on the wall. A red one, a yellow one, and a green one. One of them will set you free. But if you choose the wrong button, sirens will sound. But, lucky you, there's a note on the wall saying T-D-U-N-O-R-T-E-B. Decide which button you should press. Since you put the letters in the right order, you'll get the red button. Since only one button releases you and the other two are traps, the sign indicates the one that will set you free. You press the red button and the handcuffs fall off. Phew! The first step is complete, but there's more to go. You'll have to find your sister, release her, and then find a way out. You search for the exit. But there are three doors, so you look through the peepholes to decide which route to take. Behind one door, many little robots are poised to attack. Behind the second door, there's a room on fire. And behind the last one, you find a room completely filled with water. Which one should you pick to stay safe? The first one. Although there are robots, they're still super small and probably can't cause you much harm. Well, at least definitely less than the fire or water. So you take a deep breath and with your heart skipping a beat, you enter the first room. The robots attack you, but the first one has a giant red button you step on and it turns them off. The second one you kick really hard and it smashes, hitting the wall. Half a minute later, you're already outside the room, safe and sound, all body parts intact. Success! But what if the robot sent a signal to the people who kidnapped you? You have to hurry. You move forward, crossing the corridor, and here it is again. Three doors, and you have to decide which one to pick. Think carefully for 10 seconds. It can save you a ton of time if you go the right way from the very beginning. So which way should you go? The third door. There's a red finger stains on the doorway. Your sister must have been trying hard to break out. You take that door and find yourself in a narrow hallway. You can see the stains here and make absolutely sure you're going in the right direction. You run for about 20 minutes, continually taking turns. You start feeling a little dizzy, but still can't see an end to this hallway. Another 5 minutes pass. You take another turn and suddenly crash into a metallic door. You try to open it, but it's locked. On a little screen, a red sign appears, asking for a password. Below, there's even a password hint. 
1234-5678. Can you crack the code? There are 17 spaces. After reading the number out loud slowly, you get it. You type number 2, then number 4 three times, 5 sixes, and 7 eighths. The light changes to green, and the door is unlocked. You're in a long and gloomy metal corridor. You want to run, but you force yourself to stay quiet. You're getting close, and you're trying to be as careful and silent as possible. But when you suddenly face a huge and gloomy man standing in front of the next door, your heart drops. You want to run away, but you freeze just right where you are. He's definitely noticed you. You stand speechless, expecting him to grab and handcuff you or knock you unconscious. But instead, he asks, where are you going? You don't know why, but you tell the truth. I want to find my sister. She's 17, blonde. Ah, I've seen her, the man says. She's in this room. They always ignore me and never want to solve my riddles. Um, you know, if you solve one of my riddles, I'll let you go. You feel such a relief that you can only nod in response. What comes once in a minute, twice in a moment, but never in a thousand years? A very poetic riddle, but pretty straightforward. It's the letter M. The man smiles and moves to the side, letting you go. You run into the room. Finally, there's your sister. She has her arms and legs tied, and her mouth is sealed. But then, you look around and see two more of your sisters looking precisely the same. It's another trap. You have to decide which sister is the real one. And if you touch the wrong person, the sirens will sound. Can you choose the right sister? Before your sister was kidnapped, you were outside in the rain together. Your sister is the one with the smeared mascara. You reach the girl right in front of you, and the look of relief on her face immediately proves you made the right choice. You untie her hands and legs, unseal her mouth, and she gives you a hug. You grab her hand, and you leave the room together. But here's the riddle man again, and you'll have to solve another one of his riddles. Well, now you have two brains instead of one. Ready? When you take the hole from me, there's still some left. What am I? Both you and your sister answer wholesome. The man smiles again and lets you go. Now you have to find the exit, and you have no idea where to go. You randomly take turns and, in the end, you get lost in the building's labyrinth. After half an hour of wandering around, you realize that you've been going around in circles. You admit that you're lost and can't find a way out. Suddenly, from each of the three directions before you, a man appears. Each man says he was kidnapped too, but escaped and will show you the exit, while the other two men are guardians and will lead you back to your kidnappers. Who should you trust? You notice that the second man has bruises from the handcuffs on his arms, so you decide to believe him. You look at your sister and realize that she noticed it too. You nod, and each of you walks towards one of the other two, and unexpectedly for them, knock them out. The man gives you thumbs up and tells you to follow him. You're back in the labyrinth again, taking turns over and over. Does he really know where to go? How much time did he spend here? You even start worrying if you made the right choice, but then you bump into a massive metal door. To open it, you need to enter the password. But lucky you, there's a hint again. The note is saying 5th of March, 1st of October, 2nd of April, 4th of November. 
That's why the man was wandering around looking for someone. He couldn't crack the code. Can you? The 5th of March means the 5th letter of the word March, which is H. Similarly, the 1st letter of October is O, the 2nd of April is P, and the 4th of November is E. The password is HOPE. You type it and yes, it works! Great job! The lock clicks and you pull the heavy door open. You did it! You are outside once more. It's early morning, so you spent the whole night inside. But wait, can you hear it? Footsteps! They're after you, and you have to run to a safe place immediately. There are three ways. On the left, there's a dark forest. Straight, there's a city. And on the right, a lake. Which way will you choose? You should definitely run straight to the city where there are people around. So, what are you waiting for? Run! Martin is a Harvard student from a wealthy family, and his parents want him to start dating a girl from the same la-di-da social circle. The guy was tired of arguing with his parents and decided to give in. He liked two girls, Emily and Samantha. But which one are his parents going to like? who is actually rich. Write your answer in the comments below if you want to help Martin. At first sight, the girl on the left, Emily, seems to have more money. But the jacket she is buying at a boutique is fake because the name of the brand is written incorrectly. As for the girl on the right, Samantha. She's wearing real designer clothes, even though she's just doing homework. If a girl's financial status is important to Martin and his parents, he should pick Samantha. Look at these two girls and their fridges and comment below which of the sisters is now rich. It's the girl on the left, high heels, a flashy dress, and a fridge filled to the brim. She looks like someone who has finally managed to get their hands on big money. Thomas is an undercover detective, secretly visiting suspects, trying to figure out who has stolen a large sum of money. Today he has dined in two different houses with two different families. The first family treated him to several pizzas with various yummy toppings. The other offered him a steak and grilled vegetables. Now Thomas is a bit confused, because all the food is delicious and quite expensive. Can you help the detective figure out which family has more money? Share your ideas in the comments. Well, no matter how tasty the pizzas are, they're still cheaper than large pieces of meat. This means the family treating Thomas to the steak must have more money than the second one. But does it mean they are the criminals? Time and further investigation will show. Due to a technical issue, two families were given the same seats on a plane flying to France. An airline company worker offered one of the families to upgrade to business class but it would cost a pretty penny. Which family is rich enough to pay the necessary sum? Comment below. The family on the left is rich. They have modern suitcases covered with stickers, so they have money to travel a lot. The members of the family on the right do look good and well off, but they have old and worn-out suitcases with scratches. They probably spent all their money on designer clothes and jewelry to show off. Two guys are staring at themselves in the mirror. They both look successful and wealthy. But one of them is actually poor and is just pretending. I'm sure you know which of them it is. Prove me right and write your answer in the comments. 
A small hint, the mirror seems to be magic. The guy in a blue shirt is actually far from successful. In the mirror, he looks like a rich businessman, but pay attention to his real-life clothes. They're old, and there's even a little hole in his shirt. He must be quite poor. You're a detective investigating petty crime. Today, you've been called to a supermarket where security guards have detained two women, suspecting them of shoplifting. Look at them attentively and write who is guilty in the comments below. It's the woman on the left. The lady on the right seems to be really pregnant, but the shape of the belly of the woman on the left is weird, to say the least. While you're at the supermarket, you manage to prevent another theft. One of these people was about to steal some Pringles. Can you figure out who? It's this young lady. Look at her palm-like ponytail. Very strange shape for such a hairstyle. There must be a pack of Pringles hidden inside. But if you disagree, make sure you write your version in the comments. Now, look at these girls. They've been captured and locked in a basement. All of them have their hands tied. But one of them has more chances to escape than the others. If you've figured out which of them it is, don't hesitate and share your answer in the comments. It's going to be the girl on the left. She's got long, beautiful nails. She's bound to have a file to look after them somewhere on her. It can help her cut the rope. One of these people on the train is hiding some treasure. Can you spot who it is faster than other bright side detectives? Let's check. Write your answer in the comments as fast as possible. Ah, it's this man. At first glance, he's just overweight. But once you look closer, you realize that his belly has an uneven shape and is even a bit lumpy. Both of these ladies are in a terrible hurry. They're going to be late for work. But while one of them might still get to the office on time, the other is definitely doing something wrong and won't make it on time. Put those attention skills of yours to good use and share your ideas in the comments. The first lady is bound to be late for work. She's trying to style her hair, but the tool she is using is unplugged. Look at these dishes very closely. Do you think any of them isn't safe to eat? Comment below. Let's compare the answers. Look at this piece of cake. There's a spider on it. And is it spinning a tiny web? I wouldn't eat that dessert if I were you. Now, we've got these people who look pretty normal and all. But one of them is actually from the future. If you can figure out who it is and write your answer, you might save the planet. It's this guy. He's carrying a smartphone in his pocket. Now this looks like a regular picnic in the park. But one of these people is a time traveler. Find them faster than other brightsiders and make sure to share your answer in the comments. It's the guy with a USB port in his arm. We don't have those yet, that's for sure. Three people were stopped at the security check at an international airport. 
They were suspected of smuggling different valuables out of the country. The first man was heading for a beach resort. In his suitcase, there were lots of things people usually take to the seaside. An umbrella, a pair of sunglasses, sunscreen, and a beach towel. The second guy had a cage with three colorful birds and a pet carrier with a family of hamsters. He had all the necessary papers. The third man was traveling for business. In his bag, he had a suit, some documents, a toothbrush and toothpaste, and a bottle of very expensive shampoo. Now, we can only rely on your expertise and sharp eye. So tell us, who's the smuggler? It's the third guy. He's bald! Why would he need shampoo? On that day, several police officers arrived at the airport. They stopped a group of tourists who were flying to a Caribbean island. But the detectives didn't know the criminal's identity. That's why they had to search the baggage of all the passengers. If you're attentive enough to spot something weird, write your answer in the comments right away. Aha! It's the young woman on the left. If she was really going on a package tour to a hot place, why would she need a winter jacket? Mm. Ken went rollerblading on Sunset Avenue when he tripped over a rock. He fell down and hurt his head. It started bleeding, so the ambulance took him to the nearest doctor. As soon as Ken was allowed to have visitors, three ladies came inside his room saying they were Barbie. They look pretty, so Ken got really confused. Take a look at the three women that say they are Barbie and see if you can figure out which one is telling the truth. It's the woman on the right. Since Barbie is a doll, she can't change her expression. If you look attentively, you'll see that the first woman is blinking and the second woman has a wink on her face. This leaves us with the last woman, which is the one and only Barbie. After getting out of the hospital, Barbie suggested that they go get ice cream. Ken said yes, so they went to their favorite place. Barbie ordered a blue ice cream, and Ken got a green one. When they were about to eat their desserts, a stranger came next to them and said one of the ice creams was poisoned. Take a look at the image. Can you tell which ice cream isn't safe to eat? It's Ken's ice cream. Sure, it was originally green, but there's a strange smoke coming out of it. It's probably a reaction to the poison. Yikes! Sure looks like someone's after him, huh? One lovely morning, Barbie was driving to work when her sight suddenly went black. She woke up in an empty warehouse. There was nothing but four doors in front of her. She heard very loud noises, like there was a monster approaching. She felt like she needed to escape quickly, otherwise she would turn into the monster's dinner. The four doors had signs on them. The leftmost door had a sign saying, take the door on the right to break free. The sign on the second door said, it's the right door. On the third door, it was written, freedom is just right in front of you. And the last door had a sign saying, don't trust the signs. Can you help Barbie? Which door should she choose? Well, there's a bit of wordplay here. Let's see why. While well, the first door says to take the door on the right, the second one says it's the right door. It doesn't say if it's the correct door, but the right door as in the door on the right. The third door says freedom is just right in front of you. That just doesn't make any sense, does it? You can interpret that it's pointing to the door just on Barbie's right. And that is it. She should choose the last door. It says not to trust the other signs, but it doesn't say that they are false, does it? Marjorie is the owner of an organic farm. One morning, she walked inside the barn and found all of last week's production of apple juice shattered on the floor. She was devastated. 
this was going to cost her a fortune. She asked her employees to clean it up. Meanwhile, she took the time to interrogate them. Sean, the farm's volunteer, said that he had put all of the apple juice bottles on the shelf before heading home. He said everything seemed fine until then. Becca said she had gone home earlier than usual because she wasn't feeling well. She said she hadn't even gone inside the barn all day. Tom said he had spent the day painting the fence and also hadn't visited the barn. Can you tell who is lying? Tom is the one lying. Take a look at the fence behind them. It's definitely not painted. Linda was staying at a famous hotel where a lot of celebrities live. The glamorous building had seven floors. Five A-list celebrities were living on the ground floor, and eight Hollywood stars were living on the first floor. On the second floor, there were 11 not-so-famous people. Each floor above those had three more celebrities living on it than the previous one. All of these people leave for work every day. Can you guess which floor calls the elevator the most? This is a tricky one. It's on the ground floor. Any person staying on a floor other than the ground floor would have to call the elevator to reach their respective floors. Brendan works in the same company as Mary. He's had a crush on her for months and has been trying to impress her in any way he can think of. That's why he decided to take part in the Brain Challenge, a contest his company organizes once a year. By saying yes, he had to answer a bunch of expert-level questions and solve some pretty difficult riddles. For the first round, he had to crack a rebus puzzle. Take a look at the piece of paper they gave him. Can you guess what the answer is? The answer was broken promises. Ooh, nice! For the next round, they took Brendan to a room full of random stuff. His task was to find a specific object. As a clue, they gave him a piece of paper that said, what goes up when the rain goes down. Look around and help Brendan find the object. It was that red and white umbrella over there. That makes sense, huh? Then Brendan was taken into an empty room. The room's door was sealed with a letter combination lock. He looked around and found a slip of paper with the following written on it. P plus 3, N, 1, B, 1, N plus 4, S plus 1. Can you help him figure out the code word? It took Brendan a while to figure it out, but he was able to crack it. The code word was SMART. The key to this riddle was hidden in the alphabet. Let's see how it works. P plus its three following letters is S. N, one letter is M, and so on. For the final round, Brendan had to solve an AI riddle. If he answered it correctly, he would win the contest main prize and probably Amy's heart. The riddle said, I speak without a mouth and hear without ears. I have no body but I come alive with the wind. What am I? Can you guess what Brendan answered? The correct answer is Echo. Dave, a chief police officer, received a call late one night. Mrs. Brown, a famous chemist from UKC, went missing from her lab. Dave spent a few hours searching her lab and found a note with random numbers. It didn't look like a study she had been doing, so Dave guessed it must be a clue about where she was. The note read 26 3 58 28 27 57 16. 
Based on the note, Dave managed to find where Mrs. Brown was. He found the culprits, arrested them all, and freed the scientist. Can you guess what was written on the encrypted note and how we understood it? Here's how we figured it out. Each number on the note corresponded to an element in the periodic table. So the element that corresponded to the number 26 is Fe, iron. The number 3 is Li, lithium. And 58 is Ce, cerium. Using this logic, the first line spelled out Felice. By the same logic, the second line spelled out Nicholas. After discovering the names, Dave must have tracked the two people down, arrested them, and discovered where they had taken Mrs. Brown. In a small town, three teachers went on leave all on the same day. Janet said she had gotten into a car accident and had broken her leg, so she was having difficulty walking with her new cast. Emma complained that she had a very unfortunate workout and had injured her neck, so she was having trouble looking sideways. And Tina said she had fallen from her bike and had hurt her arm. One of the teachers was lying. Can you tell who? It was Janet. She claimed she was having difficulty walking with her cast. But she didn't even have crutches. She must be the one lying. 